Welcome to the overview of assessment task number three, the e-marketing performance review. As always, support materials for this particular assessment task consist of this video, the PowerPoint that accompanies it, the performance review Word document, and these are all accessible through Wattle, through the little drop-down box, little folder there. And as always, I encourage you, click the links and follow the elements in the site. We create the content to make life easier for you. Because there's no two ways about it. This is the difficult assessment task. In every subject, particularly where there are multiple assignments, there is one task that is harder than the others. In the decision making behind the scenes on the course, I decided that the e-marketing performance review was the best place to put the difficulty factor up to 11. And the reason for doing this is what I want the task to achieve and what I want you to achieve by doing it is complicated. Uh, there's no two ways about it. You are going to be doing something as a marketer that is complicated in your it will be complicated when you do it at work. It's complicated when you do it in this assignment. This is a training for a difficult factor. So the first thing is the word count is 1,500 words. It is intentionally smaller than the first. It's worth the same. But the e-marketing technology analysis is a forward-facing proposal and the e-marketing performance review is a backwards facing analysis and report. It's more report than analysis. You still need to do the analysis, but this is the short report of what happened and what you can learn from what happened. So to re-emphasize what makes this difficult and why it's important and why you want to have this in mind as you're working the semester. First up, you are the source of data for your essay. You will be being asked to use academic referencing, and that's where it gets really challenging and good challenging. This is Dark Souls hard style challenging. This is Mario Kart Rainbow Road style challenging. Because you are doing a project, you're going to propose the, propo the project, you're then going to do it and deliver on it, your lived experience is going to be a source of evidence. You're going to translate that lived experience through the marketing lens, back it up and support it when necessary with the marketing theory, and use the theory to explain the best case or worst case or actual case scenario of what took place at a theoretical level based on I experienced this and I can explain my experience through this marketing idea. The paper itself is going to require you to switch between three ways of thinking. You're going to look at a an introspective, self-reflective what was my plan and how well did I perform against my own plan? That's your phase one, that's your step one. Your second aspect is you're then going to look at your experience of using a particular application, package, software, whatever it was you worked on for the semester. You're going to analyze that experience, your personal experience of trying to use this, this software, this system, to achieve a set of goals, you're going to explore your own end user experience and explain it in marketing language because we have a lot of language around user experience and there's a whole field called consumer behavior. And finally, you're going to flip that introspective lens and you're going to project outwards and go, what could I tell another marketer about this particular product based on my experience, based on the theory, 
what could I tell them to let them know to, and let them have a more informed decision? So three different focal points. What I achieved, what I experienced, what I recommend. Now, the reason why this task exists is that this is part of your, the still learning outcomes attached to this, your decision-making processes, your theories, your ideas, everything about using the technology, and also that bit about recommending appropriate tools. You've just used something. By the time you're writing this up, you've had a lot of experience of using this particular process in the pursuit of a goal, and we want you to take that experience and extrapolate from it to present your ideas to the world. Now, on the directed how, there are three parts. There's the detail in the Word document and includes the marking rubrics, but it breaks down to what I did, how I did it, what other people could do with it. This process, particularly this process of looking back at back of plans versus performance, you may find a lot of the stuff that you start thinking about and when you start reflecting on can really support your ePortfolio and can work really well towards, say, a late semester uh, self-reflective task, self-characterization sketch that's part of the ePortfolio. The other aspect that's very important here is your technology analysis sets up what you are going to talk about in this document. So you need to take your ETA and have it with you because it's your guide, it's your map, it's your guiding point and your, your compass. So when you're doing your plans versus performance, we give you a set of sub goals and sub questions, but ultimately it comes down to how well did you go? You set yourself a goal, you set yourself a task, and you've gone out in pursuit of that goal. How close did you get to it? And what can you learn from it? And one of the key things around this is that we're very interested in getting you to think about, did the technology that I used enable me to pursue this goal? Or did it hinder me in the pursuit of this goal? So in the ETA, the reason why it's a technology analysis is that we're getting you to think about what can I, what do I think I could do? In the plans versus performance, it's what did I do and did the technology support me in the way I thought it would or did it present challenges I wasn't expecting? Your second section is, it's harder. Each aspect of this paper gets progressively harder because now, as your second element, you are reflecting on your use of the software, the technology, and you're thinking about it from a marketer's perspective. You're stepping back one level. You've gone from what did I achieve to now thinking about how did I achieve and what marketing theory could be used to explain what happened in my, could explain my experience, what could I use for marketing to better understand myself as an individual through the marketing lens. You will need references, you will need theory. You cannot do this section without citation and reference. And the key is citation reference will make it easier for you to do the user experience analysis. It will make it easier for you to look at a theory and a framework for something like consumer behavior or say a framework like innovation adoption or consumption theory or creative uh, uh, consum CCT theory, some of the stuff that you would have encountered in uh, consumer behavior previously, or looking at it from a marketing strategy lens, maybe looking at it from a brand management lens. Theory exists to explain the world as it is or as it could be, and you are now using that theory to explain how you you've been through and you've experienced this particular technology 
over the course of the semester. Then we ramp it up another level. I'm asking you to then rotate your thinking from introspect, what did I do? How does the theory explain what I did? To now do this as projection. And I want you to really, the best case scenario sort of thinking about this is, imagine you could go back to your week two self and sit down with them with the experience that you've just had over the last few weeks, uh, over by the time you come to write this and say, so you're going to use Platform X, this is what you need to know. This is what you can do with it, this is where it's a bit limited, this is what could be done, does well, could do better. You're basically going to explain, you're going to spend 500 words thereabouts explaining the potential use of this platform for a marketer because you've just been a marketer using the platform. So you're going to project from your experience and you can support that through marketing theory. And again, you have to have theory in here because theory explains the world as it could be. So you're looking for theories that allow you to support your projection of, I think you could use it for X because my experience indicated yes, and this theory says yes, and this paper says yes. So think about, think like a marketer, write like a marketer, draw on your marketing theory, draw on your personal experience and project out an advice round, what could you do with the platform? All right, one of the things, uh, the waiting for this assignment is not the same as you would expect. The first part, plans versus performance, is worth 20% of the overall. The second two parts are worth 80%, the 40% for user experience, the 40% for marketing opportunity. To be able to do a good write-up of user experience and market opportunity, you will need to have done a good write-up of plans versus performance because you should also be able to draw through the whole essay the thematic cluster of, I set out to achieve a goal using this platform. If I was enabled by the platform, how was I enabled? So it was a positive experience. In your user experience, you'd be talking about, well, this theory applied, and this is why I did so well with this platform, and it was such a good experience. And then a marketing opportunity, you'd be talking about saying, well, I had this great experience, and this theory suggests that people who similar to me, would also have a great experience. Therefore, marketers, you should go down this path and do use this platform to achieve this type of goal. If you come out of plans and performance saying, yeah, well, that, was, that wasn't good. The, the platform completely failed to support me. You may have an explanation in user experience that said, look, I'm a bad market fit. Or you may have an explanation in user experience that says, yeah, this doesn't as good as I am, this doesn't fit what I tried to do, therefore it's not a particularly good marketing opportunity. So your own performance will dictate which way you think and which evidence you can bring to say, maybe it's the user experience, maybe it's the marketing opportunity. And that's going to be central to this whole idea is that there are three different focal angles that you're looking at to explain the outcomes of your project. A final thing uh, that I want to mention here is that this, the performance review leads through to two possible outcomes. You are either going to be sent, given the opportunity to go to the last chance salon, uh, where you get to resubmit. So if you don't get a distinction, if you get less than a distinction on this task, I will open up a resubmission opportunity for you. If, however, you have banked a distinction or higher across your two tasks, across the ETA and performance review, it will open up the opportunity known as the power play. And the power play is a short essay that can score up to 10 points 
And those 10 points go back towards your total, your aggregate total between your ETA and your performance review so that you can top up up to a maximum of 40 out of 40. So if you've come in with you know, 280 percent and you're sitting on 32 out of 40, you can go for the power play to try and bring it up to 40 out of 40. So the power play can only be accessed if you've scored a distinction or higher in the first round and a distinction or higher in the second round because if the last chance salon opens up, they're both due on the same day. So they are competing exclusionary tasks. So either you get a second shot or you get a shot for the title. Both will be optional, both will be, uh, the house rules for both are up on the website, but basically it comes down to what is the point of potential if not to realize it? I want to create an opportunity for the top tier pack to go chase the very best score they could get. And I want to make certain that you have the opportunity to learn, adapt and improve so recovery mode or challenge mode, depending on how you score on both, but particularly how you score on this one. So if you need to ask more questions, there can be the online consultation bookings. You can send me an email or you can try and catch me across one of the social media platforms at the at Stephen Dan, stephen.dan at anu.edu.au or find us on the consultation time. Mm -hmm.